Okay, folks, it's been uh, two years since we picked up the Auto Sleepers Kingham. Um, we've spent 120, 140 nights away in it. We've done 8,000 road miles. Uh, what's gone wrong? Well, watch the film and find out. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Wolfie's Wheels. Uh, today, we're looking at the Auto Sleepers Kingham here. Uh, which we picked up in um, May 2021, so that's just over two years ago. And somebody the other day posted a comment to say, what's gone wrong with it in the time you've had it? So I thought, well, rather than answer it in a sort of a long email type reply to the comment, I would do a film instead. Um, interestingly enough, you see a lot of people on various forums and things who sort of say, well, new vans are more trouble than they're worth. They have all sorts of niggly issues uh, and I'd never buy one. I'd wait till somebody else has had it all sorted out for me, etc., etc. Um, and of course, auto sleepers, they, they aren't uh, sort of one of the um, sort of premier makes. They're a mid-range van, I think. Um, so you might think things might go wrong more often than they do with the higher end stuff. Um, well, if you watch the film, I'll tell you exactly what's gone wrong in, as I say, the 8,000 miles, uh, 130 something nights that we've, we've spent in the van. Well, we'll talk about what's gone wrong with the van in chronological order rather than the order of uh, any importance um, as to the things that have happened to it. Um, and the very first thing really happened was kind of the day we picked it up and we found that we had no solar power. Um, the van comes fitted with a, an 80 watt solar panel uh, so you can charge the leisure battery and in fact the vehicle battery uh, and we couldn't see uh, that it was despite some sun making any power uh, and as you can see in, in the picture here the little circled clip was actually not attached and that's the sort of power feed from the solar to the, the vehicle um, the dealer to be fair fixed it sort of immediately um, because when you picked the van up we picked the van up from SMC in Newark and one of the things they do when you buy your van from SMC at the time I don't know whether they still do it but they paid for a one night stay in a local uh, camping site so that you could actually take your van away see if there's any problems with it and you're on hand then the next morning to call in and just have any faults rectified or any clarification because of course when you pick the van up the handover process uh, means there's an awful lot to have to take in uh, and particularly if it's your first van um, there's all sorts of things that you will miss I'm sure um, so by doing it this way uh, they at least ensure that the customer gets a good experience uh, and as I say we went back the next day and said well hang on a minute we don't seem to have any solar uh, and the clip in the picture uh, was actually detached a bit of a mystery really did it come detached or, or was it never actually attached personally I think the latter um, I think for safety during transportation from the factory it's probably uh, not hooked up so that the uh, well just for safety really um, but nevertheless that was fixed very quickly and very easily so that was the very first fault on kind of day one the next problem we had um, also really reared its head from, I'll say day one, we didn't notice it on day one, but it um, was a constant pain uh, in the early time we had the van. Um, and that's to do with the heating system. Um, auto sleepers fit a separate whale uh, heater and a whale water heater, and they both run on gas or electric or a combination of the two if you're on mains hookup. So you can use some electric power and some uh, gas power uh, which is great or in fact all electric as I say so it's gas electric or a combination of the two anyway what we found uh, very quickly was that if you were running the heating not the water boiler because as I say that's a separate unit and that was fine but the heating itself being run on the gas in any way so it's gas on its own or gas combined with electric would work fine it would build the temperature up to the preset temperature of the van work perfectly and then it would shut off just as it should do however it wouldn't come back on again um, and the fault you can see just on the little insert pictures that i'm putting up about now uh, sort of suggested there's a problem with the gas supply uh, because there's various codes 
that the different um, lights on mean. And that one said there's a problem with the gas supply, which was interesting because everything else was working perfectly well on gas and we knew we had plenty of gas um, because the van actually comes with a 20 litre underslung gas tank. So as opposed to having the separate bottles, this has got an underslung refillable gas tank. So you go along to your local LPG dealer or an LPG dealer when you're out and you just top it up and, and it's marvellous. It's a really, really good system. But, sorry, I digress. The point being that the whale water, the whale heater would play up continually uh, and we took it back to uh, SMC down in Newark to, to get it fixed. To rectify the whale heater actually took quite a few trips back to SMC because what they wanted to do and quite rightly was determine whether the problem was with the whale heater itself or some of the software or somewhere else in the uh, miles and miles of wiring that exist within the van. Anyhow, ultimately, uh, after a bit of to and froing um, and uh, some relatively heated exchanges because I didn't think I was getting anywhere, um, Whale conceded that there was actually a problem with the heating unit itself and changed it. And since then, it's actually been fine. I think it might have fallen over once, but these things can happen, so I'm not, not in the least bit concerned. But that was a pretty major um, problem we had with the fan. Interestingly, uh, Auto Sleeper used to fit um, Truma, True Armour, not sure how it's pronounced, make to the van. And that, I think, was seemingly was very reliable, but it was a lot bigger unit, so it took up more space. So it's kind of um, a compromise that you want a bit more space inside the van for storage um, or two separate units. Anyway, it all works perfectly now. The water heater is really good uh, and the heater itself is probably a bit less effective. Um, if you sat in the cab, it does get a bit cold. That's not a fault. It's not a problem with the van. It's just one of those things. Uh, and if I ever do a film that talks about the things I do and don't like about the, the van, that would certainly feature in the things I don't like. But there's a lot to like. The next problem we had in sort of a chronological order um, was a fuse problem. Uh, and there is actually a, a main fuse um, that sort of sits between the electronic gubbins in the van. Um, and that blue, which meant that we got an alert on the phone to say that the vehicle battery was actually fully discharged and at zero um, amps. And that was a bit of a, a surprise to us because we were actually in transit at the time uh, I can't exactly remember where we were on the side of the A5, I think, just stopped for a bit of lunch. Um, and uh, all of a sudden you're told that you've, your vehicle battery is, is dead. And you think, hey, crikey, that's that's not to, not very helpful because I've got a long way to go yet. And is the van going to restart? Anyway, I um, called SMC, the, the dealers, from where I was having my lunch. And they said, ah, yeah, there's a fuse, um, which you'll see in the little bit I'm putting over over this um, and that's blown um, and because that means that the the um, monitoring side of the van cannot see the leisure bat the, the main battery um, it assumes it's dead um, but it isn't so don't worry about it now the fuse itself uh, was a tw rated at 20 amps uh, and the dealer told me that the uh, fix from the factory is just to put a 25 amp fuse in it which we did, and uh, I think it might have blown once since then um, in the two years. Um, and now we know what the problem is. It's just not a problem. Uh, but I will add this, that if you decide to put a 25 amp fuse in yours instead of the 20 amp fuse, that's on your own head. I don't take any responsibility for it. I was told to do it on my van by the dealer. I did it and it's fine. I'm not telling you to do it, but if yours blows, it could fix your issue. The next problem is a really minor one and it's to do with this nice little handy flap which comes out and extends the work surface um, and it folds down and you've got two little clips underneath it and when it's folded down it's meant to clip into place but it doesn't as you can see. Um, I'm sure I could probably get, get it fixed somewhere. I can't say how to fix it. Um, it doesn't really rattle around. Uh, it's just one of those things. But while I'm doing the thing that says what's broken on it, I'm going to put everything in that hasn't worked properly. 
and we're nearly at the end of the list really of the things that have gone wrong with the van um, but the next thing was a fairly big thing that, that, that went wrong a bit like the the whale water heater it's almost like the equipment that auto sleeper choose to put in perhaps not being really uh, right for the job and it's to do with the water pump uh, it's not the water pump on the vehicle but the water pump in the habitation which powers the, the, the sink and stuff like that um, and in their infinite wisdom auto sleeper choose to use a submersible pump uh, and what that means is that the pump is actually inside the water tank itself and it draws water out of the water tank through the pipes and out of the tap um, which is fine until of course there's a problem with the pump and you can't get to the pump because it's in the water tank and to get to the pump in the water tank you have to take drop the tank off of the vehicle not quite so good the other thing with the type of pump that they use and I don't know whether it's the make of pump or the whole overall sort of system uh, but it's very sensitive to voltage changes so particularly if you're off grid uh, you can find the pump starts making a lot of sort of sort of uh, priming noises um, at all sort of odd times of day and night um, for quite prolonged periods as it's trying to think to it thinks to itself that it hasn't got enough power so therefore I must start to prime and, and draw water through to the tap itself um, even though there's actually no demand being created by the tap and that's immensely annoying so there is a um, sort of tried and tested cure for that and that is to basically discard the manufactured solution and install a pump by uh, a third party called Shoreflow um, and that pump itself actually sits underneath the settee in this particular van in the Kingdom um, and you do away completely with a submersible pump so what that job actually entails if you're doing it properly is to drain and drop the tank remove the submersible pump completely and use the pipe work uh, back out um, and install a submersible pump um, a lot of people don't bother to do that they just install the pump inside and then they draw water through the existing but disused submersible pump in through the shore flow pump um, and I'm sure that works fine uh, but just in my own mind it's not quite the right way of doing it so we've had to fork out and have a um, the shore flow pump put in which you can see here here, here is the new pump that's installed um, actually at the factory we paid the factory to do it and it's a, a neat installation so all I need to do now is to build something going across here and then I've got all this area sort of in here to use for storage because I don't really want stuff floating about in this area which could sort of go and damage any of that that gubbins and we've only had the pump in for a couple of days um, but already uh, I do think it's better um, we don't keep getting the repeated uh, sort of pumping noises from the pump when it decides it might want to do pumping noises um, so we're pleased with that installation anyway and that brings us on really to the last of the problems we've had with the van um, so if you walk this way into the bathroom I'll show you excuse the mess in the van but we are away at the moment um, and uh, this is just life as it's lived anyway the final problem is just in this bathroom cabinet here where you've got a little knob which is now just fallen out um, and that little knob basically you push in and then you can slide the thing open and it stops the doors rattling from side to side um, while you're traveling along uh, and that knob actually broke about three hours after we left the factory having the pump sorted out so uh, it's just a bit unfortunate really they're badly timed but I'll have a look at that when we get home because actually we're away at the moment although by the time you watch this film we'll be home so if anyone's watching this thinking oh good wolf is away I'm gonna go and rob his house uh, forget it we'll be back home by the time you get to see this so overall as I say two years 8,100 miles and 130 something nights that is literally all the problems we've had with this van which I think in the scheme of things is, is pretty good. Um, I mean, the whale heater was probably the biggest problem uh, and that was just down to an unfortunate uh, manufacturing problem by the heater supplier. Um, there's thousands of these vans are made with whale heaters with no problems. I was just unfortunate. That can happen. 
point is it was sorted out. It was sorted out entirely to my satisfaction uh, and, and all was well. Um, the um, vehicle side of it itself, it's, it's a Peugeot Boxer van uh, and we just had no issues at all with it. Uh, usual things of topping up things like screen wash and ad blue and stuff like that but you know uh, all has uh, been absolutely fine on that side so I'm sorry if it's a bit of a disappointment that you're expecting a, a litany of uh, problems and issues that we've had with this van uh, we just haven't um, so all it remains now is to, for me to say thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed the video please feel free to subscribe uh, tell your mates share it do whatever you like um, and I will look forward to seeing you in a future episode of Wolfie's Wheels. Bye.